that question is even Mr. Movi, if you look at it, he's 82, if I'm not mistaken. And the last generation of the old guards are there. Isaac, uh, of course, is gone, but Movi is still there. Now, when you look at the young generation that is presently there in Nagaland, they must have got sick and tired of this fighting, this kind of activities, the terrorist activities, the insurgent activities all along. And somewhere along the way, we see a lot of youngsters from Nagaland moving to Indian cities like other parts yeah, of Northeast absolutely. also, coming absolutely. from Manipur, absolutely. Mizoram absolutely. and Tripura. They are also coming into the Indian mainland and actually speaking to the, uh, the Indians coming down to Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Mumbai and other cities, Delhi also. And they are kind of now with the Indian government, they are with the Indian citizen, they work here. But still, many Indians are not comfortable uh, having them around. I mean, I remember there was a controversy in Delhi where they were called by a particular nickname, mm -hmm. which is not liked by the Indian government. Mm -hmm. But do you think that young generation is making a shift, a change that is happening there? A lot of change has taken place on two, three fronts. First thing I would tell you, this ceasefire is going on from 1997 except some very minor, that one incident you have told 21 me. 21 years. Uh, leaving that, 1997 to 2023, how many years is that? 23 plus 3. 26. In these 26 years, people who used to be in the forest, jungles and all that with their arms, they all came out. They met their families and they keep coming and going because there is no fighting. Now, do you think that these fellows would go back to the jungles and take up fight again? They have the, to earn a living somehow. Right, they have to earn a living. They have, they have come back. They are part of the society. They might, some of them might be doing some mischief here in the sense, extortion, ogera, ogera. But by and large, a lot of them came. And 23 years, how would he, what would you do? He had to settle down and do some job, something else. So, that's one. The second thing is, one of the main reasons for the insurgency in the Northeast region is the utter neglect of the Northeast region in the development point of view and also psychological point of view. Because they are a different ethnic tribe, you know, they are Mongoloid features and all that. Our fellows always used to call them chinks or this, that and all those things. But they also, in, in fact, uh, I was there as Home Secretary in 97, 94 to 97. They would call the fellows, outsiders, Indians going there, they would say, what, you damn outsiders. There is a word for outsiders in the North, it's called Mayangs. What are you doing here? You get lost, don't come here. You know, even officers, they would say, we don't want the officer from outside. So, they used to say, they used to call us outsiders. But today what has happened is, so many of the people from the Northeast, including Nagaland, have come into the mainstream India. They are there in Pune, they are there in Bangalore, they are there in Hyderabad, they are there in Delhi, they are there in Calcutta doing so many jobs, especially in the soft, you know, services industries, hotels and, uh, you know, receptionists and uh, IT business and all these things. I realized the amount of people who have come out from the Northeast into India when uh, some rioting took place in Bangalore and uh, the trains were full loaded to Assam, you know. By these people, they couldn't get tickets for three, four days. So, so many uh, Northeast people from Assam and all that, and from Nagaland, they have come into the mainstream India. So, now our fellows are calling them foreigners, some of them. And Delhi, you know, because they dress separately, they eat separately, they have, you know, uh, more free, you know, girls talk to boys and all that. So, they have a more liberal, this one, outlook. So our fellows used to say, we don't want these people in our neighborhood, this, that and all that. So, I mean, a lot depends on the civil society also. How this would shape out, work out, would depend on the Indian civil society. I think that somewhere along the way, we got to become more broad-minded. We have to become broad-minded. We must accept them. They have a rich culture, all the Northeastern states. They have tremendous values. You know, the ladies are a sort of women are respected so much. The Naga Mothers Association is one of the most powerful groups there, you know, which has an influence on the son or on the husband. In fact, I worked through them to get the ceasefire going. I used to always talk to the Naga Mothers Association, who had a lot of influence on these people to come back, you know. So there are so many bad democratic system of governance and all that. We have a lot to learn from that uh, uh, northeastern area, you know. So, to answer your question, I think as 
and this is increasing in this government. Roads have been opened, communication is going there, a lot of more money is being sent there. And uh, um, we are much, much more tolerant now to the other Christian groups or whatever it is. There is even a minister now in charge of Northeast, I think Mr. Yeah. Kishan Reddy is there. Ritsu and all that. Kiran Reddy Ju, Kishan Reddy Ji also is a part of right. the development of So Northeast. I think time would heal these things. You, you don't have to rush really the... So you Please subscribe to Nationalist Hub English channel for more interesting videos. And don't forget to like and share this video. Nationalist Hub, it's a news revolution.